screen in the Canyon Gallery. There are seats out there facing the screen. So if you'd like to take a seat out there, please do so. We will need to keep the aisles clear. You're welcome to stand. We need to keep the aisles clear. Thank you very much. Is that a 360 ball? This one is, yeah. Wow. That's awesome. So we're going to hand it. I just got, I just got the gun, so I thought, oh, this would be kind of interesting <laughs> place to try it out. Yeah. I bet no one's ever done monks in 360. <laughs> yeah.
as missiles sort of fly over us, over countries, we see the effects of global warming. It is absolutely essential and vital to have platforms where we can all listen to some of the great minds who, not for the sake of entertaining us, but through a volition to write, they're able to imagine for us another world, another people, another history, another philosophy. Over the next few days here in Boulder, our festival directors have put together an incredible program of writers and speakers who I hope you will enjoy, you will discuss, and you will take away some of the key points and ideas that you will be part of during these three uh, days. May I invite our uh, festival director, Navita Gokhale, to say a few words about the program and how she coined that with my colleagues, Kritika, Sukman, and Jesse. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank one of JLF's primary partners, Z. Z is an incredible uh, television and media company. They have 100, over 170 channels, and I always get it wrong. Uh, they are spread across every continent. I think they're still to get to the penguins and the Antarctic, but I'm sure they will have a channel very soon with dancing feet uh, there as well. So thank you very much. Sunil here, CEO of these live entertainment decisions. A division. Thank you, Simi, for coming out from India. To Samir, I don't see Samir anywhere in the room, but I'm, he's got a chair. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a very precious commodity today. Thank you very much, Samir. He's the head of uh, the CEO of the American Division. Thank you for being here. And thank you to all our partners, especially this wonderful space, the Boulder Library. Uh, and I love walking across the Seat Cafe and seeing the Boulder Creek flow past, that in itself is an incredible energy, and to the Library Foundation and the city of Boulder who embraced us from year zero and made us very much part of this incredible neck of the woods that you are all in. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Namda Gokhale. But I want to say thank you to the most important part of any literature festival, which are the audiences. So a very big round of applause for all of you out there. <laughs> Writers, uh, well, we are supposed to be solitary, though through all these literature festivals, uh, we don't look that solitary at all. But uh, a book is read in solitude. And in uh, festivals like this, it comes alive in many different dimensions. And uh, I think this is one of the most special things about literature festivals. Apart from the fact that a literary community develops, as has happened in India, where across 24 national languages and across South Asia, uh, from Nepal and Bhutan and Bangladesh, writers need to share their common concerns, their common languages. And here, when we have writers coming from around the world, they also link up and they all learn to be a little less parochial in their own different ways because I believe that even the most cosmopolitan of us have some element of, of some limitations of where we come from. Uh, that's why I find it extremely um, contrary position that the more local I become, the more global I become. And that really is one of the reasons why I cherish this festival so much because it is so far away from Jaipur where the seed of this festival began and me and William and Sanjoy and so many others putting together a tiny festival which grew and grew and grew and grew. And here we are in Boulder and uh, it, this festival has restored my faith about the very global na nature of literature, uh, of our understanding as a species, as a planet of our shared stories. Um, we are each other's stories, and our human narratives converge and collide and reformulate as we struggle to understand our turning world. So here, uh, in the next few days, 
from the ancient learnings of India and Tibet, and from the songs of Milarepa, to the tidings of new technology, from the wellsprings of First Nations, to the complexities of colonialism, globalization, and nationalism, of the struggle for authenticity and the entanglement of cultural appropriations, of the labyrinth of politics and the call for truth, and also some very important sessions on journalism. And there I would like to pay a short tribute to the great Indian writer and journalist Gauri Nankesh, who was recently assassinated in Bangalore. <laughs> to her indomitable spirit and that of writers and journalists in different ways. Uh, so literature and poetry, drama and music bring us the consolations of the timeless pursuit of the arts. ZJLF at Boulder is a rooted local festival. Uh, it is essential, grounded sense of community that drives us and that combines with that cosmopolitanism I talked about, reaching across oceans and continents and cultures, bridging Jaipur and Boulder. So please join us for a weekend which will be brimming with ideas and excitement, a unique journey of the mind and spirit. From the steps, my favorite venue actually, from the steps to the brook, to skyscapes, the Canyon Theatre, we will get perspectives on our world yesterday, today and tomorrow. So thank you again, all of you for being here. Invite It's a commonplace in journalism today that uh, the uh, space in the world for serious writing and serious journalism is shrinking. Uh, there are column after column out there on how cell phones are taking over our lives. It isn't television, it's, uh, it's, it's movies or uh, serials on TV and that the numbers of books, serious books being bought, the number of great newspapers, the circulations of things like the New York Times and the New Yorker are sinking. Against that, uh, I think this festival stands as a wonderful counterpunch. We've grown from, uh, I always tell the story, 14 people, largely Japanese tourists who got lost on our first morning. <laughs> <name. laughs> In, uh, uh, a long time ago, more than 10 years ago in Jaipur, to this enormous sort of Woodstock called Glastonbury of the mind. Uh, we, we are, I mean, last year we crossed over a third of a million. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and what's so lovely about it is it is completely free. Uh, the, a lot of the effort uh, of the management of this festival comes through raising money, we're particularly grateful to see who are here today. Um, and it allows us to put the greatest minds in the world, great chunks of Harvard and Yale and Oxbridge faculty, uh, the great Nobel Prize winners, Pulitzer winners, Sahitya Academy winners, uh, the, the great um, notaries of, of, of journalism and writing and literature and uh, screenwriting and travel writing and drama across the world on the stage for free and anyone uh, of any sex, any age, any economic bracket, uh, any, uh, uh, any group of any sort can just turn up and listen. And the most moving thing I always think is going down to the Jaipur railway station of Living, where there's always about two or three thousand kids sleeping rough on the platform. They can't afford accommodation, but they can, they can come and see their favourite writing. And it is there, they completely free and open to all. Uh, so thank you for having us again, Builder. Um, it's a great pleasure to have this. I love these, this gradual uh, uh, teamwork, colonisation of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Australia fell <laughs> last April. I don't know if be in Polynesia or like Z <laughs> heading for the Arctic soon. <laughs> Bring it on. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, we've learned from the best that the British have colonized us for so many years. <laughs> May I take this opportunity to invite uh, His Excellency, the Ambassador of India to the United States. This is his first visit to Colorado and to Boulder, so do give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's indeed a great pleasure to be here. I always wanted to re come to Boulder ever since uh, I knew teamwork had started uh, GLF here. 
and it's been uh, three years that it's taken me to finally reach here. I, I'm quite used to attending uh, uh, Jaipur Literary Festival as, as a writer, uh, drinking about uh, 200 cups of matka chai <laughs> <laughs> and, and enjoying everything that happens there. And I've seen it grow from uh, over six years that I had the privilege to attend it from a small festival to this most magnificent event. Uh, but it is, it's an added privilege to attend this festival as, uh, as India's ambassador and, and to, to meet everybody and to thank uh, Teamwork and, and their compatriots, uh, their, their, uh, their uh, partners in, in Boulder for having brought this edition to Boulder and, and to the United States. It's a great privilege for us to have this event going, particularly in the 70th year of 70th year of India's independence, which is being celebrated uh, all over the world. It's 70 years since uh, India became independent. As, as we look at the very multifaceted journey that uh, India <coughs> has conducted, I think the journey of our literature, I wouldn't say of our literature, but of, of our literature's outreach to the world, I think is one of the most significant uh, aspects of this journey. I mean, for centuries, everybody knew that India had a great literary tradition, but how much of it was known uh, was, was another matter. And, and when we look back at the time of our independence, or even 20 or 30 years after our independence, uh, you can count on, on the fingers of one hand uh, the number of Indian writers who were writing in English and were being published and, and, and read in the West. Uh, so I, I've been particularly privileged as, as, as an Indian diplomat whose journey in diplomacy has been almost coterminous with this growth. I joined the service when Salman Rushdie wrote Midnight's Shurka. So uh, from there to here, it's, it's been this fantastic efflorescence uh, of Indian writing which has been brought to the world. Uh, I must tell you that this is largely Indian writing in English which in many ways is the tip of the iceberg because there's huge writing, as I mentioned, in Indian writing in, in, in different languages. And I think the, the, the greatest contribution that has been done to this journey is by the Jaipur Literary Festival. And my congratulations to all of them for making this Indian literature, India as a literary destination, India as a reading destination. Today, if you want to send a novel, in London, the first thing they ask you is, what about the India rights? It's not, it used to be the other way around uh, 20 years ago. So I think this is a huge journey and JLF has been very much the lead in this journey. My compliments to all of all, all the co-directors, William Dalrymple, Namita Gokhale, and the, the uh, magician behind all this, uh, Sanjoy Roy, uh, and to all the great audiences that come here. So I do look forward to the next two days and I'm glad to be part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Sarna. We also have the privilege of uh, having with us today US Congressman Jared Polis. May I please invite him on stage to say a few words. Like Ambassador Sarna, uh, this is my first uh, Jaipur Literary Festival I've been, I've been able to make it to. I've wanted to ever since I heard the news that Boulder had won the rights to hold this festival for five years, attend it. But unfortunately, the past uh, three, two years, Congress had been in session. But fortunately, I was able to get a plane late last night from Washington uh, to be here uh, for the kickoff and join so many notaries. And I want to say, of course, and express a welcome on behalf of Colorado and the 2nd Congressional District, to Ambassador Sarna, to High Commissioner Swara. And what a wonderful thing that uh, India has said, sent to North America, Canada, and the United States as their representatives, not only uh, remarkable and accomplished diplomats, but also men of culture and men of letters. Uh, Ambassador Sarna was humble in his remarks. He is, in fact, the author of several uh, books that have, have even been published in our own country, including uh, the book of Nanak, The Exile, We Weren't Lovers Like That, and a number of other successful books. 
And of course, of course Mr. Suara, uh, the High Commissioner to Canada, is the author of the book, Q&A, which became a very successful film, and in fact, certainly a favorite of our family's, Slumdog Millionaire. So let's give a great recognition. I wish that among our own uh, diplomatic corps, we had as many men of culture and women of culture <laughs> as any of the citizens. Events uh, like the Jaipur Literature Festival really remind us of the role of great thinkers, great writers, great articulators. And while technology today has allowed for perhaps a more egalitarian dialogue, a more harsh dialogue, uh, it also, through the work of literature, uh, allows for the spread of ideas that bring us together. Concepts, philosophies, ideas that can unite us. Something that in today's world and with today's discourse is too often lacking. Uh, we've all seen the uptick in our country, unfortunately, in hostility towards, towards journalists, towards academics, towards members of the press, and towards writers. Frankly, it is conferences that bring people together like this that are a big part of the antidote uh, to that social direction and a response from those of us who value the words and the deeds of dialogue and togetherness. We have so many other great speakers at today's festival. We have Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Michael Resendez from Boston Globe Spotlight team that helped expose the Catholic Church sexual abuse scandal. We have British journalist Christina Lamb. Uh, who wrote I Am Malala. Uh, we have New York Times journalist Suki Kim, Offer Without You, and, and so many others. And on behalf of certainly Boulder and Colorado, I want to express that we hope this is not just the third of five Jaipur Literary Festivals. We hope it is the third of 10, of 20, of indeed 100, yes. uh, of something that truly is. Something that truly is at its core a multi-generational endeavor. As somebody who's who's traveled to India. Uh, and for those of you who haven't, uh, I encourage you to do so through the literature that you'll be presented with today uh, and in the future. It's truly a country and a people that is so deep and, deep and rich in the history uh, and the magic, where every, uh, every stone tells a story, where every uh, village and family uh, tells a story of 100 generations. Um, something that for all of our great quality of life that we have in Colorado, uh, we don't have as much of that long-term mystery uh, and magic that is around every street corner and every tree uh, in India that many of the authors who are presenting here have given breath to and life to uh, with their remarkable words. So on behalf of uh, the United States, I'm honored to uh, welcome the Ambassador and the High Commissioner. On behalf of Boulder, I want to welcome uh, the Jaipur Literature Festival for the third of what we hope will be many, many more. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Polis, for sharing your wonderful and valuable time with us. Now, may I please uh, call upon stage CEO Z Live and Z Talent, Head Corporate Brand and Communication, Sunil Boj, please. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Some really powerful and insightful words said by as usual. Uh, honored to be here this September uh, in the largest gathering of the you know, world's best writers. How are you? It's in the face. <laughs> Literally. Okay, so uh, glad to be here in, in a place where the world's finest writers in one of the largest literature festivals I think in the world. Right? At the outset, I really want to say that I'm not a writer. I've not written books. But I've tried to read life. And today I want to share some thoughts uh, with people in this room who I know can and have the freedom to dream, try and make this world a better place to live. Right? I've been told that Denver and Boulder has the, it's, it's a learning place. It's a learning state, learning place, and the highest number of PhDs per capita in the US reside here. And uh, that's interesting. And that took me back uh, to an acronym called OLPC. 
one laptop per child. I don't know how many people remember that stuff. It was designed for spreading computer literacy in various parts of the world which didn't have the access to them. And somewhere, you know, in some parts of the world, there was the change of the called 1MGC, one machine gun per child. And that got me thinking that who has the right to get children into a war? Who has the right to decide and define what I should do, the way I look, unfortunately, kind of that, manufacturing the or what I, what I pray to, what I eat. Right? And who is the guy, if I don't do any of these, who snuff and smother at that? A creation of love, passion, and commitment cannot and should not be extinguished by the whims and fancies of some spoiled individual or jealous rulers. And to make it worse, the world is spanning politicians or political mercenaries who are using the emotional cannon to burst the harmony of the brotherhood to smithereens. And that too for a short-term myopic lived glory of the World Bank. And that's where we need the polity to be educated, enlightened, and aware. And I strongly believe that a nation that reads and writes cannot but have progress. And we need that power to kind of come to the entire world. There are lots of, it, it's a very simple equation that I, that, that I figured out, that jobs follow skills. Skills follow reading and writing. And the world, and this country, and any other country in the world, needs to understand and do things which is in tandem with that. Right? If Trump or anybody, Hillary, or any, any other leader in the world has promised jobs, it's not going to get delivered with vehement, plain, and hollow rhetoric. They have to create and lean on the education system, on schooling, right, and on skilling. Else it's going to just be a big disillusionment for people who have been promised those jobs and outsourcing the to countries who have that kind of skill. So while these views are my own and not the company I work for, right, but I'm sure that they resonate with three amazing men who I have the pleasure to work with. Dr. Shubhash Chandra, who is the chairman and founder of s right, and the founder of Z, uh, and his member of parliament, Rajya Sabha. His sons, uh, Puneet Goenka, and being CEO of Z, and Amit Goenka, CEO of the international business. And these three men believed in the fact that there's Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is my family. 25 years ago, when they sought out to, you know, go to 172 countries to inspire people like you and me, to have the freedom to dream, to reach and engage in content, and to live a better life. Right? So I think uh, I want to thank each and every one of you to you know, have made it to this festival. This is the fourth year of ZJF, not the third, third is bolder, but fourth for us. And there are many more to come, I can kind of assure you for that. Because for us, TV is about great writing. And this is the mecca of great writing. So please enjoy the wonderful sessions we have. I am keen to participate in, in all of them, and thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Bush. As, and as you rightly said, that this is the fourth year that they have been supporting the Japanese Festival. Of course, uh, JNF and Boulder, this is the third edition. But thank you very much for supporting the festival and supporting literature and the arts. Uh, now may I please invite on stage a uh, vice chairperson, Library Commission, Johnny Tetter, to come and sh uh, share a few words. Hi again. This time I'm not, not really Johnny Tetter. I'm David Farnan, I'm the library director. So this is David's rumpled jacket, which he gave me to wear. And this is David's face, so you can imagine that this is David speaking to you. So on behalf of David, I first wanted to say welcome to all of you. Thank you for taking your time to be here. Thank you for coming to interact, to listen, to learn. Public libraries are essential to our democracy. They are essential to our sense of community, and they're even more essential now than they have ever been. So public libraries are places <laughs> places where everyone is welcome. I hope you've seen our giant everyone is welcome signs here in the library. 
Um, it doesn't matter who you are, your age, your gender, your ethnicity, your background, your socioeconomic pattern, you are welcome here. And it's one of the last great civic institutions where people from all classes and all backgrounds mingle. So it's essential to keep libraries open. And JLF is all about those things. I mean, this festival is about people coming together to listen to one another, to talk with one another, to disagree with one another in a civil way, to make things, to create things, and to leave with a broader, bigger understanding of both ourselves and the world. And that's what library is about. So this has been a wonderful partnership for us. We're very happy to host this. We hope to continue hosting it into the future. I know David would want me to thank the wonderful team of arts staff who have been partners for three years. Um, we would like to thank the Boulder Library Foundation who is our partner on an ongoing basis. Most of the programming for the Boulder Library is actually paid for by our foundation. Jesse Friedman, the executive director of JLF and the head of JLF Colorado, which is what makes JLF free. And of course, all of you for coming here and joining us. Please have a wonderful time. If you have any questions or comments or issues, let any of us know. There are people running around with JLF volunteer t-shirts. Um, they're happy to help you with anything. And thank you. Now may I please invite Jesse Fredman, who is the executive director of JLF at Boulder. decided to bring the Jaipur Literature Festival to Boulder, Colorado, and I thank them very much. Um, and everybody has spoken and extolled the virtues of the mind, of literature, of education, of bringing uh, countries together in conversation, of bringing the world together. And I, yet I still wonder uh, what it is that has um, captivated moved and stunned and inspired over 200 literature festivals across Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and Europe just from the Jaipur Literature Festival. What is it that is just motivating and inspiring this incredible absurgence of getting together, gathering over literature, and I guess I would venture to say it's just the very heights and depths of our very own human mind and heart. It's our very own humanity and that we're, we're craving that, and when we can come together and celebrate that, something incredibly moving happens. And I want to quote the founder of the Jaipur Literature Festival, Sanjay Roy himself, who said that platforms like this engender humanity and allow for empathy to find a space in people's hearts and minds. Um, it's a magical thing for a handful of words artfully arranged to stop time, to conjure a place, a person, a situation in all its specificity and dimensions, to affect us and alter us as profoundly as real people and things do. And those are the words of Jhumpa Lahiri, one of our well-known Indian authors. So it's my pleasure to thank everybody who makes this happen and makes the festival remain free. And you might wonder why is the festival free in Boulder, Colorado, which obviously has a lot of great good fortune and great wealth. And yet, the poverty level in Boulder, Colorado is actually the same as the poverty level in the state of Colorado is actually the same as the poverty level in the United States of America. And I want to mention that the poverty level for a family of four is $24,000. So if you're making more than $24,000 in your family of four in the United States, you're not considered under the, um, under the reign of poverty. That is obviously ludicrous, so I think it's really important that um, festivals like this remain accessible to the community and to people, even if they make $35,000 a year. <laughs> so I want to thank Z Entertainment, I want to thank the Boulder Library Foundation, the Boulder Library, David Farnan, I want to thank the city of Boulder who has taken on funding us directly from the city budget, the mayor, our city manager, the Boulder Convention and Visitors Bureau, 
Mind Spark Learning, who is our sp uh, venue sponsor for the Canyon Theater, the Anchor Point Foundation, the Boulder Arts Commission, Naropa University, Highland City Club, the Boulder County Arts Alliance, Brock Publications, CBS Denver has been our media partner this year, KGMU, CPR, The Daily Camera, Elephant Journal, the Boulderado Hotel and University, and there's many, many more people to thank. I want to especially thank our 150 volunteers who we would not be here without. I want to thank um, <laughs> many, <laughs> many to God, Kali, and William Dalrymple for the magic we've created that is spreading all over the world. Thank you so very much. Enjoy. Thank you for being here. session at 4.15, so please do stay back for that as well. Thank you very much.